I don't remember meeting Dr. Muster. Having transferred schools, I have a lot of trouble giving form to my five years of college. Was it six? I'm never sure. All I know is, starting two years before I graduated Hunter College, my memories are populated by time spent with Dr. Moster. Usually, we'd talk in his office, a cramped room in the decrepit Thomas Hunter Hall that could have been mistaken for a closet or a disused club space. Dr. Moster shunned technology and kept only handwritten notes. His desk drawers were overstuffed with stacks of brittle notepaper, some of which had to be more than twice my age. He liked to cover his books with thick brown paper before he shelved them. To protect them from the inevitable decay, he'd say, which made his office feel even more drab and indistinct. Were it not for his impeccable memory, keeping track of all those books would have been impossible. Why am I telling you this? I guess I just wish I knew what happened to him. Dr. Moster taught media studies. Most of his work centered around the way fiction interacts with the theory of the multiverse. If you're not familiar with multiverse theory, it is a widely accepted idea in physics that suggests our perceived universe is really just one in an infinite number of universes that represent all possible quantum eventualities. The multiverse refers to that collection of infinite universes. If that doesn't make any sense, think of it this way. Every time you roll a die, there are six possible outcomes that you can perceive. From your point of view, you will roll the die, experience one of the outcomes, and act accordingly. In the multiverse, all outcomes exist simultaneously. In one out of six of all possible universes, you will roll a one. In one out of six universes, you will roll a two, and so on. Yet from the point of view of the multiverse, all of these universes exist at the same time, in the same place. This theory doesn't just apply to dice rolls. Every second, each one of us is making quantum decisions that create alternate universes. Right now, you are listening to me speak. But there are an infinite number of David Tuckmans talking to infinite versions of you. Some of these Davids are talking slightly slower. Some of these Davids are talking faster. Some are talking at the exact same speed, with no discernible difference whatsoever. Some are talking at the exact same speed, with no discernible difference whatsoever. Some Davids are saying this much, much better than I am. Some are not. Some versions of you are much more interested in this than you are right now. Some are much less. Some just turned this recording off and went to the store to buy some toilet paper. Some are right now talking to their girlfriends. For some of you, those girlfriends are wives. For some, those girlfriends are boyfriends. Or different people altogether. Maybe not significant others. And in some parallel universes, None of us exists. When I met with Dr. Moster, we'd talk about his theories about the multiverse. But this was just one version of me. There are infinite David Tuckmans who will never meet Dr. Moster. Who knows? Maybe in the worlds of those David Tuckmans, Dr. Moster does not even exist. But that doesn't matter. Dr. Moster is a part of this David Tuckman's memory and experience. Dr. Moster's theory focuses on what he calls leakage within the multiverse. It is an accepted axiom of multiverse theory that any universe we can imagine, as long as it is physically possible, exists. Yet there's no way to look between universes to see the way our other possible selves live. Not according to Dr. Moster. He believes what we call fiction is actually the shadows of events and people from other parts of the multiverse. The common belief is, and common sense dictates, that fiction is created entirely by incredibly imaginative residents of our universe. Dr. Moster doesn't buy that. He simply cannot accept that human beings could possess so much capacity for invention. He believes 
that every single thing that happens in fiction is true. Not just inspired by truth, but actually true descriptions of events occurring somewhere in the multiverse. His theory doesn't merely apply to plausible fictions. Even the most implausible creation actually happened. And I say actually happened to emphasize that these aren't possible events that could occur in an infinite number of universes. No, to Dr. Moster, things as unlikely as, say, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or Home Alone 3 are as concrete as me, you, or my conversations with Dr. Moster. That's all fine, but what proof does Dr. Moster have? When I met him, he had spent most of his career tracking what he called the leakage of other universes into ours, people and events from fiction who'd somehow made their way into our reality. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I, that's the wrong word. To Dr. Moster, this was all one reality. People and events who'd made their way into our world. But this wasn't enough proof for him. And it definitely wasn't enough proof for the academic community. So around the time I was getting ready to graduate, Dr. Moster told me two things. First, he told me he had a new project. In order to prove his theory, he was going to bring a so-called fictional character into our world. All he had to do, he told me, was create the accoutrement of that person. A mere representation of the person, articles about them, profiles, websites, wouldn't do anything, but if he invented a fictional character and created enough of that person's personal physical effects, clothing, a home of some kind, so as to give him the feeling of realness, that person would begin to exist in our world. It would be faint at first, but if he could slowly add to that person until they felt undeniably real to an outsider, that person would physically become part of our universe. Second, he told me that he had been fired. He didn't explain why, but he told me that he needed to empty his office as soon as possible. Since he had nowhere to relocate his stuff, he was giving it to students. Over the course of a few weeks, he had me show up at his office with a duffel bag, into which I'd pile shelf after shelf of his books and papers. Soon, his office was empty, and I had a ton of files at home I didn't know what to do with. With one semester left from me, we said our goodbyes and promised to keep in touch. We never did. I emailed him about his project, but never got a response. I called him, and we made plans for lunch. A week before we were supposed to meet, he called, told me he'd fallen ill, and canceled. The next time I called, his number had been disconnected. It was around this time that his files started falling apart. Whatever ink he used was so weak that it was fading into nothingness. When I'd pick up some pages, they'd crumble in my hands. I started looking for Dr. Moster's articles on the internet, but couldn't find anything. Either the journals he'd published in had no internet presence, or his articles had not been archived digitally, and I couldn't find a trace of the man online. So I started archiving his stuff myself. I went through his files and typed everything, trying to capture his work before the physical copies degraded. I've been working on it for months, and hopefully, I should be able to begin recreating a fraction of his writing. Everything else, unfortunately, has been lost. I have no idea where Dr. Moster is, or if he's even alive. I hope he is. I leave you with the recording that I believe to be the last remnant of the man himself. This is just a piece of a conversation I had with Dr. Moster during which I accidentally left my voice recorder on. What do we leave in this world once we leave it? Is it our memory? It's true we leave an impression on those with whom we interacted, but that's transitory. It fades as they do. Within a generation or two, they are gone. Any recorded evidence of our presence, images captured, our writing, all of these 
No matter how permanent they seem, or ephemeral, all these fade. Eventually, no matter what we are, no matter what remains, all of this, every last bit, will crumble to dust until we are no more.